Yahoo Fantasy Football, the Tucson Tackle Dummies League. This is your Week 13 recap. With the playoff picture taking shape, let's get straight to the Week 13 matchups so we can get to the playoff scenarios with just one week remaining in the regular season. So we're going to go through the eight matchups and we'll talk about what every team needs to do and what they need to look out for with just one week left to play before the playoffs begin. Leading off, Mojo Jojo knocked off the Amazons 130.65 to 76.08. Mojo wrapped up the Aztec Division title and improves the 9-4 after knocking off Amazons in the week's biggest blowout. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers led the way with a game-high 34.36 uh, points, and Mojo posted seven players beating projections this week. Mojo had a surprising 15.75 from running back Maurice Morris, the Lions running back that's now getting the call, with Amazon's running back Javid Bass done for the season. Mojo did make a couple of miscues with the lineup this week, opting to go with the injured linebacker Desmond Bishop for no points, while linebacker David Hawthorne picked up 15 on the Mojo's bench on Mojo bench. And running back James Starks had less than a point this week at flex, while Mojo had running back Donald Brown on the bench for a surprising 11.85. Amazons had lineup issues this week as well, going with banged-up wide receiver Jerome Simpson, who played but scored no points, and fellow wide receiver Sidney Rice, who was in the starting lineup but injured this week. The same can be said for Michael Jenkins, who started at flex, but was also out with injury. All of these injuries continue to pile up for Amazons, who also had running back Darren McFadden injured and on the bench again this week. Uh, but injured Peyton Hillis returned this week to action, scoring 9.95 points on the Amazons bench. All in all, Amazon's had two players in double digits, with quarterback Matthew Stafford going for 20.87 and flex Dexter McCluster surprising everybody for 18.16 this week. But the other seven offensive players in the Amazon's lineup combined for just 5.55 points this week. Amazon's falls to 4-9 and nine on the year, while Mojo, who has already wrapped up the division and a playoff spot and is the first Aztec team ever to finish with a winning record, Looks to go for the number one seed next week with a win and some help. And then in the matchup of the week, What the Shell defeated Raging Boners in a close one, 159.13 to 154.52. A battle for the division crown becomes the highest scoring game of the week as Shell posts the week's highest score to hold off Boners and win the Cavs division title. Shell needed a late push by Maurice Jones-Drew, who scored 26.98 on Monday night to get Shell ahead by a narrow margin. Quarterback Drew Brees had the team high for Shell with 26.98, and wide receiver A.J. Green added 18.7. Boners put up one hell of a fight, though, getting 39.11 from quarterback Cam Newton and 22.55 from wide receiver Hakeem Nix. Both teams dealt with disappointment on offense, though, as Shell had a terrible game from Garrett Blount at running back with just 1.9 points, while potential flex option wide receiver Stevie Johnson sat on the bench, scoring double digits. And Boners could have potentially won the matchup had he went with running back Ahmad Bradshaw's measly 5.2 points, which tallied the bench this week over flex starter Jacoby Jones and his 0.2 points this week. On defense, Boners got an impressive 21 from the San Francisco defense and 11.5 from linebacker Nick Barnett, but opted to leave one defensive lineman slot empty this week, potentially costing the team much-needed points in a close battle, while Shell got 15 points from his two defensive linemen, and the Denver defense added 13 points. Shell improves to 9-4 with the victory and has a shot at the league's top seed with a win and some help in Week 14. Boners goes from potentially challenging for the division to ninth overall right now at 7-6 and six with the loss. And due to a lack of overall, sc overall scoring, Boners will need the next week to get some help in order to make the playoffs. Meanwhile, capitalizing on the Boners loss, Wildcats defeats Angry Arthritis 114.62 to 112.63. Wildcats jumps into the playoff picture in a big way, holding off Arthritis for a crucial win this week by less than two points. This week's closest matchup may have been decided by injury as arthritis linebacker Pat Angerer went down on the first play of his game and did not return, scoring zero points while healthy linebacker Brian Cushing was on the arthritis bench scoring five and a half points, more than enough to win this close game. Wildcats managed just five players above projections this week to arthritis' seven 
but got the game high with 31.5 points from wide receiver Percy Harvin. Harvin more than made up for the injured running back Adrian Peterson, who was again in the Wildcats starting lineup scoring no points, and less than two points each from wide, receivers, uh, wide receiver Kevin Walter and tight end Heath Miller. All while wide receiver Malcolm Floyd rode the Wildcats bench for 17.8 this week. Arthritis had 24.03 from quarterback Eli Manning and 41.55 from four wide receivers, but that wasn't enough to make up for the running backs D'Angelo Williams and DeMarco Murray, who combined for a very disappointing 6.7 this week. On defense, Wildcats got zero from the Oakland defense in a favorable matchup against Miami, but was bailed out by 13 points from linebacker London Fletcher. Wildcats improves to 7-6 and six and is in the coveted final wildcard slot with a week left to play, while Arthritis falls to 3-10 and 10 on the year and 0-5 oh in divisional play. Also capitalizing this week in the wildcard race, White Powerade defeats Navajos 124.07 to 84.59. Powerade takes a must-win game against fellow wildcard hopeful Navajos to get some breathing room and improve the number 7 overall. Powerade and Navajos underperformed this week, each with just five players beating projections, but average performances from multiple positions were more than enough to beat a Navajos team that struggled with lineup issues and injuries. Powerade got a game-high 17.15 from wide receiver Greg Jennings, plus 11.4 from tight end Fred Davis, who after the game was suspended for the remainder of the season for failing an NFL drug test. Navajos continued to miss in the uh, continues to miss the injured Jake Cutler as quarterback Caleb Haney managed just 3.17 this week and fellow Bear Matt Forte got injured after posting just 1.2 points. Wide receiver Jabar Gaffney scored no points while fellow wide receiver Anquan Bolden managed just 3.7 points this week. Navajos did have a team high 15.5 from running back Kevin Smith, but even he got injured this week. And over on defense, the Navajos defensive linemen's uh, defensive linemen combined for no points at all. Powerade has a crucial points advantage in the tiebreakers and should clinch a playoff spot with a win next week. Navajos will need to score some points next week and get some help, but still has a shot at her third trip to the postseason in four years if she can pick up a victory and get the help she needs. And stumbling in the wild card race this week, Inglorious Bearju knocked off Championship Cheese. 143.13 to 102.82. One team continues his pursuit of a division title while the other falls out of the driver's seat and needs a mini prayer to make the playoffs. Bearju only had four players above projections this week, but Cheese failed to capitalize, getting just two players above projections. Cheese had a game-high 27.9 from running back Ray Rice, and linebacker James Laurinaitis scored 13 points. Cheese also went with rookie quarterback TJ Yates at quarterback, returning a serviceable 11.12 in his first career start. The rest of Cheese's squad struggled, with three wide receivers combining for just 12.45 points, the defensive backs combining for 3.5 points, the defensive linemen combining for the same, and linebacker Patrick Willis scored zero after getting injured on Sunday. Meanwhile, Bearju got a combined 44.3 from running backs LaShawn McCoy and Richard Mendenhall and continued the offensive firepower with 12.4 from wide receiver Jordy Nelson and 14.68 from quarterback Matt Ryan. Bearju goes into a winner-take-all matchup for the Wildcat division title next week, sitting at 9-4 on the year, and could even get into the league's number one seed with a win, while Cheese falls to number 10 in the overall standings at 6-7, having lost four straight for the first time in team history. And then also within the Wildcat division, Lombardi's Ghost knocked off Big Ben's Revenge, 119.36 to 74. The league's top team continues to hold the number one seed by knocking off the league's worst team by 45 points this week. Big Ben wouldn't have won this matchup, wouldn't have won this matchup if all of his bench scoring was added to his starter scoring this week, as lineup issues again sunk this ship. Quarterback Curtis Painter didn't play, and six other players scored zero points, meaning Big Ben only scored points with nine players this week, led by 16.6 from wide receiver Michael Crabtree. Lombardi held serve by getting 35.46 from his Brady to Welker combination, plus 17.2 from tight end Jermichael Finley, and 16.39 from running back Darren Sproles, 
which made up for the fact that Lombardi had seven players that scored fewer than three points this week, while leaving 15.37 from running back LaRod Stevens Howling and 16 from linebacker Clay Matthews on his bench. Lombardi will lock down the number one seed with a win next week, but a loss would drop this team all the way to number five, so there's a lot left to play for, while Big Ben remains dead last at 3-10 and 10 on the year, but a win could move this team ahead of a couple of others with some help next week. And then in the Toro division, AZ Chargers knocked off Greek Thunderball 158.76 to 122.36. AZ Chargers clinches a playoff berth and controls its own destiny in regards to the Toro division title after knocking off Greek this week. Greek posted his highest score since week 5, getting 20 from the Pittsburgh defense, 16.95 from running back CJ Spiller, and 19.2 from running back Roy Hallou plus 15.79 at quarterback with Ben Roethlisberger. But again, lineup issues caused an issue as the starting defensive lineman combined for zero points, and Greek went with the injured Jeremy Macklin at flex for zero points, while wide receiver Pierre Garçon went for 29.25 on the bench, and wide receiver Andre Roberts added 12.6 points on the Greek bench. AZ Chargers would have likely held on regardless of Greek's decisions thanks to 25.85 from tight end Rob Gronkowski and 24.86 from quarterback Phillip Rivers. Six offensive starters beat projections this week for AZ Chargers who got a, uh, got a combined 51.2 from four wide receivers this week. AZ Chargers improves to 9-4 on the season and still has a shot at the league's top seed with a win but must win next week to keep a hold of the still unclaimed Toro Division title, while Greek has lost five straight and sits at 3-10 and ten overall. And in the final matchup of the week, Mustache Discount knocked off Viva Football in a close one, 157.23 to 150.2. Mustache keeps their Toro Division title hopes alive by holding off a strong Viva team this week in a close contest. Viva could have pulled off the upset here, but defensive lineup miscues would be the downfall for a team that had seven offensive starters above projections. Viva went with the Buffalo defense for a point, while the Kansas City defense rode the Viva bench for 24 points. Defensive back Cassius Vaughn started for Viva despite being on injured reserve, while defensive back Eric Smith scored 8.5 points on the Viva bench, and defensive lineman William Hayes scored no points at all for Viva, while on the Viva bench sat defensive lineman Brett Kiesel and 3.5 points. All of these letdowns negated a great offensive day for Viva, getting four players above 20 points, including a game-high 30.15 from running back Sean Green. Viva had a combined 85.69 from four running backs this week, but still lost. That accounted for 57% of the team's total score this week. All the while, Mustache had just five players beat projections, but got 34.38 from the Romo to Bryant combination and combined for 66.55 from his four running backs this week, led by a team high 27.95 from running back Chris Johnson. Mustache had zero from the Cincinnati defense, but rallied with 12 points from defensive lineman Jabil Sheard. Mustache improves to 8 and 5 and is a virtual lock for the postseason, regardless of what anyone else does next week, win or loss, and has a shot to win the Toro division if AZ Chargers goes down next week. Viva slips to 4-9 and nine on the season. Looking ahead to Week 14, the final week of regular season play, every matchup is going to mean something next week, whether it be for the wild card or for division races. In the Wildcat division, Bearju faces off with Lombardi in what will probably be the game of the week, as the winner will take the Wildcat Division crown. AZ Chargers will take on Viva Football, and Mustache Discount will take on Greek Thunderball. AZ Chargers and Mustache will be deciding who takes the Toro Division next week. And Mojo will take on Powerade. Uh, Shell will meet Wildcats. Boners meets Arthritis. Cheese meets Big Ben. And Navajos meets Amazons. In the Mojo versus Powerade matchup, a Mojo win could get that team a number one seed going into the postseason. Powerade needs a win badly in that wild card race. Could still get in with a loss, but definitely would prefer to go in with a win. What the Shell taking on Wildcats. Shell's wrapped up that division and could go for number one in the league overall. Well, Wildcats needs a victory in that wild card race to keep a wild card spot. 
Boners takes on Arthritis. Boners would need a win and a little bit of help in order to jump back into the playoff picture, but a win would go a long way towards doing that. Championship Cheese taking on Big Ben. Cheese is going to need a win plus some help just to get to 500 and still has um, a legitimate, although long shot, hope at making the postseason. And Navajos has probably the longest odds of any of the teams still alive, but still mathematically has a shot but has to take on rival Amazons in the final week of the season. Breaking down the playoff picture in full, looking ahead, Lombardi's Ghost is the number one seed as it stands right now and has a game advantage on any team at 9-4, uh, considering this team's already at 10 wins. So a win would lock down the number one seed, but a loss, considering it would be to Inglorious Bearju, would drop this team to number five in the standings. So this team could drop uh, significantly with a loss. Number two, what the shell? A win could mean potential number one if Lombardi loses next week, um, and a pretty good shot at number two regardless. But a loss could drop this team to number four in the standings. AZ Chargers, a win could claim uh, a win would take the Toro division for this team, um, and this team actually still has an outside shot at the number one seed. While a loss could drop this team as low as sixth in the standings and cough up the team. Uh, the chance at the Toro Division title. Number four, Mojo leads the Aztec Division. A win could get this team as high as number one, while a loss could drop this team as low as number six. Actually, it would be number four, sorry. Uh, number five, Bearju. A win uh, would take the division for this team, so this team could go from highest wild card to highest ranked team. Actually, could get this team into the number one slot. Well, a loss likely means this team stays fifth. Number six, Mustache Discount. A win could mean the division crown with some help. Could get as high as number three with that. A loss could drop this team to pro uh, sixth, seventh, or eighth. Could stay at sixth, could drop to seventh or eighth, but has a significant points lead over the other teams in the wild card race, so this team's a virtual lock for the playoffs already, regardless of a win or loss next week. Number seven, White Powerade, holds the points advantage on all the other wildcard hopefuls at seven and six, and really all the other wildcard hopefuls, period. Uh, so this team is a virtual lock regardless of what other teams do. However, loss and wins by Wildcats and Boners would mean this team is out just based on record. Number eight, Wildcats, holds about a 45-point lead on Boners, so a win should mean a playoff spot barring a big game for Boners. But a loss could be devastating as Cheese holds a points advantage at the moment and with a win could move ahead of Wildcats. And a loss with uh, Boners and Powerade loss would mean that this team uh, uh, with a Boners and Powerade victory would mean that Wildcats would be done. Number nine, Boners lacks the points advantage, would need to win and get some help in the points category, um, but could get in if uh, Powerade or Wildcats loses and this team wins. Um, a loss would mean a likely elimination due to the lack of points. Number 10, Championship Cheese needs a win and some help. Two of the three teams at 7 and 6 have to lose for this team to even have a shot. Then this team needs to be ahead on points, uh, which means the team has to win, obviously, but also needs to make sure they score a lot of points next week. Uh, they hold a close advantage on points with Wildcats and a more comfortable advantage on boners in the points category, but likely won't get an advantage on Powerade um, because of the difference in points going into the week. And your last team uh, with a shot, number 11 in the standings, Navajos, is alive mathematically but has the fewest points of all the wildcard contenders. This team has to win for a shot and then will need at least two of the seven and six teams to lose and will need to outscore anybody who does win by a large margin to make up some, some ground. So uh, either way you slice it, we've still got 11 teams fighting for eight playoff spots uh, with the final week of play approaching. So don't forget there is a game on Thursday. And uh, definitely check out the Facebook page all day Sunday as I hope to be there updating everything in real time, letting everybody know where their team stands as everything boils down in the final week of the regular season. So we hope to see you back with your Week 14 recap and a playoff uh, preview as we head into week 15 action um, after this exciting conclusion to the, to the Tucson Tackle Dummies Yahoo Fantasy Football League.